Alright. Good afternoon po sa ating lahat. Uh, maganda hapon po sa mga kasama kong guro sa Department of Education ng Pasay Division. Sa aking mga kasama po sa Kalayaan National High School. Sa aking mga co-faculties. At sa aking mga kasama sa Senior High School. Gayon din po sa Science Department. Magandang hapon po. Magandang hapon din po sa aking principal, Sir Agapito Chodoro N. Manaog. Ganon din po sa aking assistant principal sa senior high school, Ma'am Maria Garde B. Cleope, as well as with the junior high school principal, Dr. Mark Anthony Camilaran. Magandang hapon po. Minabati ko din po ang aking EPS sa science, si Dr. Maripaz Mendoza. Hello po, mga ma'am and sir. Um... Maraming salamat po muli, Bibal, sa opportunity na ibinigay niyo sa akin for the second time around na makapag-talk ako. Um, this time regarding sa optimizing the curriculum and learning experience through modular approach. So muli, ako po si Dr. Andreline Tagyam Clavero from Kalayaan National High School, a current subject group head ng STEM and academics, a master teacher one. Okay. So, proceed na po tayo sa ating presentation. Ano po napapansin ninyo dito sa picture na pinost ko? So, marahil may mga sasagot dyan. Hindi kayo makasagot kasi I know uh, mga comments and suggestions ay uh, ibabasahin pa sa akin mamaya or forward. So, basically, nakikita natin sa picture is a normal teaching situation. Face to face. So, halos lahat naman tayong mga teachers na mimis natin yung ganitong situation. Especially lahat um lahat tayo mula sa basic hanggang sa tertiary education. So, this is the face to face, yung normal teaching situation wherein very evident yung participation ng ating students as well as yung interaction is present, no? But then, sad to say, dahil sa COVID-19, ito ngayon ang situation ng ating classroom. Okay? So, ano po mapapansin natin dito sa picture? Okay? Maaari sasabihin niyo sa akin, ma, wala naman tao, eh. Wala, walang estudyante, walang guro. Okay? Ito na yung situation ng classroom natin ngayon. Miss na miss na natin yung face-to-face, -face, but then the danger is still there but dahil walang vaccine. Hindi inaalaw ni President Duterte na magkaroon tayo ng normal face-to-face -face classroom because wala pang vaccine sa COVID-19. So this is our um, fear. Paano natin maitatawid ang school year 2020-2021? Sa papaanong paraan natin uh, matuturuan or may transfer and learning sa mga bata, maraming problema. Maraming magulang nagsasabi na wala kaming gadget, paano matututoy anak namin? And meron din akong narinig sa isang balita na sinabi ng isang parent na uunahin ko pa ba yung pagkakaroon ng gadget or tablet para lang makapag-aral yung anak ko, better yet, I will let him or her stop learning na lang. Hindi i-skip na lang yung school year. Kasi nga, they could not afford the distance learning. But then, marami pa rin paraang ginagawa si DepEd para lahat ng bata ay magkaroon ng pagkakatuto ngayong taong panuruan, which is the modular approach. Okay. So in this session, we have the following objective. Objective number one is we're going to define the module and then discuss the origin of the module, identify the different parts of the module, and explain the effect of module in teaching and learning process. So what is a module? A module can be defined as a unit chapter, topic, or segment of instruction. It is a standard unit or instructional section of your course 
that is self-contained. Chunk of instruction. A week is a common module length, but it can be shorter or longer depending upon content and your teaching style. So alam ko ang module in na in yan sa lahat ng teachers ng Department of Education. I know uh, some universities like University of the Philippines, meron na silang modular approach noon pa man. Pero sa DepEd, sa pamilya ng DepEd, ito pong module ay medyo bago. Ba't din ginagamit na sa ibang area like alternative delivery mode? Pero ngayon, ito na po yung pinaka um, foundation natin, pinaka strategy natin para magturuan natin yung ating mga bata. So what is the origin of the module? So way back then, according to Tohei 1999 and Biggs 1999, Robinson Donnelly and Marian Pitts Morris in 2005, module a module to forge education is sound and logically links between learners needs aims learning outcomes resources learning and teaching techniques and strategies criteria of assessment and evaluation so yung mga nabanggit po na yan yung learner needs aims learning and teaching techniques and strategies and the criteria of assessment and evaluation are the common components of a module. So way back then, meron na talagang nag -e exist na module. So this representation, as you can see, is the basis of Tohei's um, concept about the formulation of the module. Bakit daw nagkakaroon ng formation ng module or bakit nagkakaroon ng module? That is due to learner's needs, pangangailangan ng ating mag-aaral, teacher needs, pangangailangan ng guro, institution needs, pangangailangan ng ating paaralan ng institution, whether it is sa higher education or the basic education, and professional body needs. And then, when we submit these things, there will be evaluation mechanism. Of course, hindi naman tayo gagawa ng module na hindi natin kukuhanan ng evaluation. So what is the sense na binigyan natin sila ng module na hindi naman natin gagamitan ng, ng evaluation? Okay? Now, the modular design process composed of three components. Modular design process. We have the module rationale. We have the module aims. And then the learning outcome. Rational, the importance of the module. Module aims, the objective. And then the learning outcome. Ito yung goal natin. Magkaroon ng learning outcome sa bawat estudyante. Regardless the level, uh, the, the level where they belong. Whether it is the basic education or the higher education. And then of course, if we have there the learning outcome, we have there the learner support and then the subject content, okay? For the learner support, we have their assignment strategies, of course. Paano natin malalaman kung meron ba naintindihan ng ating estudyante doon sa ating module? So we will give them assignment strategies. Bahala na si teacher kung anong strategy ang gagawin niya. Basta ang importante mag na kung may learning si bata doon sa kanya module. And then, combining those, of course, you have the teaching strategy. In the case of science, constructivism approach ang ginagamit namin. Of course, other learning areas would use other approach. They could incorporate other approach in module writing. So, hindi lang naman science ang meron ng module writing. Across learning areas, kaya lahat ng learning areas sa DepEd pinagagamit, pinagagawa ng module. Okay. So, this provides the brief overview. Yung pinakita ko po sa inyo, this is the brief overview of the variables. Brief overview of the process. Highlight the crucial variables 
in module design and finding the relationships between them. So however, it is important to stress that it is not a linear process. So if you're go if we're going to go back with the previous module, kung makikita nat, kung makikita po natin dito, this is not a linear process. This is a cyclic process. Okay? So they have interconnection with one another. This promotes deep approach to learning, continuous interaction with content and others, relating new ideas to previous existing knowledge. So di ba yung module natin, may part tayo doon na what I already know. Ano na yung alam ko dito sa topic na to? Or minsan may mga review part tayo ibinibigay to gauge their previous knowledge. Providing clear explanations and cognizance or observation-based knowledge to students. Structuring and balance is student workload. Okay? So, we are providing knowledge when we are writing or formulating a module. Of course, since we are, we provided them the key concepts, we are also giving them practice exercises in order to enhance their learning. It also provides opportunities for students to pursue topics in depth so they can understand the materials for themselves. So since a module kasi individual binibigay ito, they have the luxury of time para basahin nila ng, ng maigi, pwede nilang balik-balikan yun, and then they could study uh, certain exercises na binigay mo, pwede nila ulit balikan, pwede silang mag-refer doon. Okay? And then ensuring an appropriate, formative, and comprehensive assessment strategy. Ensuring an appropriate, formative, and comprehensive assessment strategy. So ibig sabihin, dapat ito ay parallel sa ating module objectives. Okay? Pag nagbigay tayo ng ating assessment, kailangan parallel po lagi sa ating objective. Okay, moving on. So we have here the self-learning modules. So what is self-learning modules? The use of self-learning modules in teaching is another form of individual use instructions. This is called modular approach of teaching and learning according to Jaya 3, 2004. If self-learning modules are available, some topics, they can be given to the student as assignment for learning. Scientific attitude refers to an individual outlook towards life. Okay. So, the modules could be given to the students for their self-learning. So, yun nga po yung sinasabi ko a while ago na sa module, you are allowing self-learning. And they could learn on their own pace. Okay. Modules are increasingly being used in many countries as a way of organizing a language curriculum. As a consequence, many course books are now structured on the basis of module rather than units. The concept of module is strictly linked to the idea of a flexible language curriculum. Taneha in 1989 defined module as a unit of work in a course of instruction that is virtually self-contained and the method of teaching that is based on the concept of building up skills and knowledge in the screen. A module is a set of learning opportunities organized around a well-defined topic which contains the elements of ordinate dictation, categorical objectives, edifying cognition activities, and evaluation utilizing criteria according to UNESCO. So our modules po, 
This is very famous around the globe. Ginagamit na po natin yan. Okay? Alright. So this is modular teaching is one of the most widespread and recognized teaching learning techniques in many countries, including other Western countries and Asian region. Modular approach is used almost in all subjects like natural science, specifically in biology and medical education, and even in social sciences, as well as in computer education. So this is the reason why ang modular teaching po ay ginagamit across learning areas. Okay. So nasabi ko na po ito kanina, no po? Alright. So moving on with the modular approach. According to Man, uh, according to Man Loeb and David 1985, the modular approach considers the individual differences among the learners which necessitate the planning for adoption of the most appropriate teaching techniques in order to help the individual grow and develop at her or his own pace. So, since individual nga po, we are allowing the students to develop their learning on their own pace. So, baga, walang pressure. Kasi isa-isa sila eh. Sa, nor sa new normal kasi, individual silang natututo. Okay? So, let us move on to module development. Okay. So, module development promotes practice to plan and develop modular materials. So, ito po module development, ito na po yung nangyayari sa atin, sa mga kapatid ko sa Department of Education. Okay? Na we are being met by our supervisors, by uh, virtual meetings, and they discuss the um, most essential learning competencies. So kailangan magkaroon mo na ng meeting, ano ba talaga ang nilalaman ng isang module? Kailangan uniform, hindi pwede kanya-kanya. No? So like sa DepEd, we are um, following the five C's ng isang module. And then, Later on, I will discuss some of the parts na ibinigay sa amin sa Department of Education in module writing. Now, module writers develop a common framework. Common framework for the design and development of modular materials. So, kinakailangan po, uh, katulad nga po na nasabi ko kanina, sa DepEd, merong prescribed na parts ng isang module. Okay? So, yun po yung uh, ibig sabihin ng ating second bullet. Now, according to Brown and Atkins, 1991, when designing modules, it is essential for teachers to be aware of concepts of deep and surface approaches for learning. So, dito po sa part na ito, Pag nagbibigay tayo ng practice exercise, kinakailangan po mula doon sa pinakamadali hanggang doon sa pinakamahirap. Of course, we could not give exercises na mahirap muna, reverse, no? mahirap tapos madali. Kasi kailangan nating magkaroon ng progression doon sa learning ng isang student. No? Kailangan pa ipaintindi muna natin yung pinakamadaling konsepto papunta doon sa pinakamalalim na konsepto ng ating learning material. Now, many researchers have previously been conducted on the relationship between courses and the approach students take to learning. So, yung approach po na sinasabi ko dyan is the modular approach. Okay. According to Salho et al., he cited that there is a positive relationship between curriculum and the modular learning approaches. So maraming na po mga pag-aaral na nagpapatunay na a modular approach 
ay merong positive correlation or positive relation between the curriculum and then the learning approaches. So, kaya ito nga po yung inadapt ngayon ni DepEd in um, sa pag-open ng school ngayon 2020 to 2021. Because this is the least thing na pwedeng gawin ng ating Department of Education. So what is the goal of module? The goal of module is to provide resources to instructors that will allow them to transform their classrooms into active student-centered learning environments. According to Stewart, et al. 1999. Modules are self-contained. Independent instruction unit, systematically organized, well-defined, have a means of evaluating the work. So katulad nga po na sinabi ko kanina, it, is, it should be organized. And this is an independent instruction unit wherein the students are given an individual copy of the module and then they are also um, being uh, exposed to the learning process and then afterwards they will undergo the evaluation. So what are the components of a module? Module have different components depende kung sino ang proponent. Okay. Discuss muna natin itong first component na module. So, the first component of a module, we have here the introduction, the rationale, and then the objectives, activities to engage students, information, exercises, the practice, apply, synthesize, assessment, reflection, feedback, and additional resources. So, this is a typical component of a module. So an introduction to the module objectives, it's the rational or purpose and context. So sa introduction ng module natin, nandito yung ating objective, nandito yung rational, or what is the importance of the module. For number two, activities that provide ways for students to engage with each other in discussion and with the information and concepts. So, yung information and concept, ito yung tinatawag nating key concept, the important concepts that the student should remember. After the important concepts, there would be a series of activities. Practice exercise 1, practice exercise 2, then practice exercise 3. Again, inuulit ko po, mula sa pinaka madali, papunta sa pinaka mahirap. And then, opportunities to practice apply, analyze, or synthesize new information may include work or practice exercise, practice exercises, labs, or case studies. So nasabi ko na po kanina yung practice exercise. There are some subjects na what if ma'am hindi naman problem solving yung involved or, or di kaya yung mga pagsulat ng formal team. In the case, let's say, of social studies, pwede silang gumawa ng case studies or social sciences okay, in paragraph form. Now, number four, a chance to reflect and articulate students' acquired knowledge includes a formal or informal assessment of modules objective. So, nandun na po tayo sa part ng assessment and Reflection, a chance to reflect. Pa paano magkakaroon ng reflection yung bata? Okay. And then for the feedback, feedback to students regarding their learning and accomplishment of module objectives. So, doon na po yun sa feedback. And then you have there the additional resources. Of course, hindi naman natin pwede sabihin na, ah, oh, perfect na yung module ko. Lahat ng information ay naibigay ko na. Okay. You could give additional resources for them to browse, for them to read on, dagdag kaalaman doon sa 
topic na diniscuss ninyo. Additional resources for students to extend their learning through enriching activities and evaluation. So we have here another example of module component. So kanina, yun yung module component number one natin. Ngayon, we have another example of module component. We have here the overview, the introduction, or introduction, the lecture notes, assignments, exercises, discussion interaction, labs, practice exercise, work example, and then summary. Alright, so let us discuss it one by one. For the introduction, the introduction is a place to provide a rationale and highlight the module relevance by describing how it fits into the course and may provide a brief overview of new material. Let's say this module will discuss so on and so forth. It is also a place to remind the students what they have already learned and how this new information will build on their previous knowledge. Kaya nga mayroon pong may, may mga ibang style ng module na naka-KWL naka para malaman din natin as teachers ano yung prior knowledge ng student natin dun sa topic na yun. Then what I want to know and then what I have learned. For the lecture notes, any reading or visual material in addition to the text or reader. Maybe instructor prepared text, PowerPoint slides, website, articles, graphic organizers, or other media and material. So we could provide it on the lecture notes. For the assignment or exercises, um, it describes the assignments in detail and to provide students with the needed information and resources, including the due dates, if there are more than one type of assignment, the module may be have a page for each. So the, for the assignment and practice exercises, katulad na nasabi ko po kanina, ito yung gagawin na students natin after learning the key concepts from the module. For the discussion and interaction, collaborative and interactive activities that will facilitate communication between and among students including group projects, case studies, discussion, questions, or other types of communication and collaboration. Now, di ba meron po tayong um, distance learning? Doon sa mga estudyante na merong mga laptop o di kaya um, um, tablet or smartphones, pag nag-Google Classroom sila, pag nag-Google Meet sila, Collaboration could exist there. Pwede silang magkaroon ng collaboration of their ideas. So for the meantime, ganun muna dahil bawal yung face-to-face. -face. So moving on, for the labs, practice exercises, and work examples, explicit opportunities to practice or review skills or procedures. Assessment or evaluation, the assessment component of the module, whether... It is a test, quiz, essay, journal, or port portfolio entry, peer evaluation, or self-evaluation. So marami po tayong uh, means para sa assessment or evaluation. As a teacher, kayo po yung bahala mag-decide kung gusto niya ng multiple type test questions, true or false, or if you want them to drop their essay, journal, etc. And then for the summary, a module summary that pulls the material together, highlighting to the students the objectives they accomplish and what they have learned. Okay. So that is for the example of the module components. So we have here another components of a module part two. Of course, we have there the overview. Overview is... Ang ito pong dinidiscuss ko na components of module na part 2 is based on the Tennis Board of Regents. Okay? So ito po yung sistema naman nila to come up with the components of a module. So you can see from the previous uh, discussion that I have, may mga similarities po 
Pero may mga nadadagdag din po as we go on with our discussion. For the overview, this is a general statement about the nature of the module and its relation to the course as a whole. The introduction should not only introduce the topic of the module, but should also forecast the content and organization of the module itself. Okay? And then moving on, module learning objectives. These objectives should be the specific outcomes that relate to each individual module. Students should be explicitly and clearly told what they are expected to learn in each module. It is very important to make sure that the module outcomes align properly with the assessment in the same module. So, katulad nga po na sinabi ko kanina, our learning objectives should always be aligned to your assessment. And syempre, Hindi lang naman siya dapat sa assessment naka-align, dapat naka-base din po ito sa binigay ng ating Department of Education. Particularly, the most essential learning competencies or the MELTs. Hindi po tayo pwedeng mag-deviate, hindi po tayo pwedeng lumihis sa MELTs sa binigay ng DepEd. Keywords and concepts. These are list of keywords with or without definition, perhaps listed for emphasis so that the students will be alert for the explanation or definition later in the module. But then, I suggest for the keywords and concepts, mas maganda po may meaning yun para mas tumanim po this student yung concept. Content lecture, reading, assignments, and then etc. Okay? You may separate this material into lecture, discussion, board forms, PowerPoint presentation, reading requirements, self-assessment activities, and so on. Again, for the additional resources, supplemental or complementary materials relevant to the module. Okay. So, kat katulad nga po na sinabi ko kanina, for the additional resources, hindi naman lahat na ibigay natin doon sa ating module, we need still reinforcement from other related or relevant materials. Okay? And then, assessment and evaluation. So, assessment and evaluation, na-discuss na po natin yan kanina, Depende doon sa hinihingi ng ating objective kung ano yung ating magiging type of assessment. It could be multiple choice, through all polls, or you will allow your students to write a journal, so on and so forth. And then, of course, the summary and reflection, what they have learned. For the Hinge Modular Matrix, so these are the suggested um, parts or recommended parts of each module, the pre-assessment. If you're going to remember po, this is a pre-assessment, ito yung tinatawag natin na pre-test. Why we are giving pre-test? Because we want to determine the previous knowledge of our students. Ano na ba yung kanilang alam doon sa topic na gusto nating i-discuss? So this is the reason why we are giving the pre-assessment or the pre-test. And then, of course, the learning objectives. These are specific statements, including the actions, performance, criteria, and conditions of what students will be able to do upon completing the module. What is expected to the learner after learning the module? Assigned reading, specify chapters, pages, documents, slides, lecture notes, and provide guided reading suggestions or points for students to look out for in the reading. That is for the assigned reading. Okay. So you will, you will give assigned reading to your students. Of course, kaya kailangan may mga reading materials din sila para, para ma-enhance yung learning nila. And then sometimes you also give assigned writing. Assigned writing or writing assignments can range from post to the discussion board to formal papers. Each assignment should have clear explanation 
of expectation and evaluation criteria. So you could give writing exercises. Exercises are activities. Each module should have an interactive activity for the entire class or for groups, which encourages critical thinking and practical application of the material covered in the learning module. So of course, a module should have practice exercises or activities. So ito na po yung sinasabi natin kanina, three practice exercises with different um, level of difficulty. Hindi pwedeng isang practice exercise lang, okay na. Dapat meron tayong set of practice exercises na ibibigay sa student. Okay? And then next, for further study, take advantage of the rich resources on the internet and provided by the publisher. Websites to enhance learning and stimulate students' curiosity to dig deeper into the subject matter. For further study, hindi naman po natin pwedeng tigilan yung student natin na halimbawa, diniscuss mo sa earth, sa earth and space, sa, sa earth and space yung tungkol na sa inner and then outer planet. Gusto niya pang mag-discover through, through using the YouTube or the internet. We should allow our students to do that para magkaroon pa sila ng, uh, ng opportunity para makita nila ano pa ba yung aside sa lecture na binigay or discussion ni ma'am doon sa module na binigay niya. Ano kaya ano pa kayang ibang heavenly heavenly bodies ang makikita ko in between dito sa mga inner and outer planets ito. Kasi may mga batang they are always thinking beyond the box. Okay? And then post assessment, the end of module assessment should be in the same format. Essay or quiz questions as the pre-assessment to measure the student progress. So, since nagbigay tayo ng pre-assessment or ng pre-test sa students natin, of course, we are expected to give also post-assessment to determine whether there is a learning process occurred along the duration of the exposure of the students in the modular approach. So through this, pwede nyo pag-aralan, gamitan ng statistical treatment ng T-test kung meron bang significant difference before and after the exposure of the student in the modular teaching approach. So these things are excerpt, uh, excerpted from a guide to creating modular courses February 2007 in online classroom, the Hins Modular Methods. Right? Now, moving on. So, we will discuss our very own um, components of a module from DepEd. So, ito po, yung nandito sa, uh, what do you call this, dito sa left side, sa left side natin, we have the parts of the module which is adapted from the alternative delivery mode. You have there the what I need to know, which is the content of the module. And then what I know, the pretest. What's new, the lesson proper or the brief discussion of the lesson. So, the sa brief discussion of the lesson, nandito yung mga key concepts natin. Okay? Then what is it? The exercises, practice exercise one, two, and three. And then what's more, if you have additional exercises, kung hindi lang sasapat yung tatlong exercise, you could exceed up to four exercises. And then of course, what I have learned, which is the generalization, or what I need to remember. And then assessment or the post-test. Now, sa case po namin sa DepEd, so we are a request to have this uh, four parts of the module. So, lahat ng teachers ginagawa po ito. We have there the objective, of course, copied from the most essential learning competencies, and the, then the introduction, what is the module all about, and then the activities, and then the assessment. Right? So, what is the DepEd instructional design in making the module? 
So according to them, Ed, we, we should have the five C's in our module. Namely, communication, creativity, critical thinking, collaboration, and then the character. Okay. So what are the five C's? So this was taken from the Mancom of Regional Director Garma. Curriculum rearticulation is giving emphasis on what we are going to teach. NCR students, character. Pag sinabing character, magkaraon ng tamang ugali. Communication, matutong makisalamuha at makipag-usap. Eh kanino naman makikipag-usap ang ating mga mag-aaral kung nasa bahay sila? Pwede naman po sa mga kasama natin sa bahay, kanilang magulang at kanilang mga kapatid. Creativity, matutong maging makalikhain kahit nasa bahay, they could be creative. Critical thinking, matutong maging mapanuri. And then collaboration, matutong makisama at makagawa kasama ng ibang bata o tao. So, why am I sharing this? Since marami po sa ating education uh, educators ang nasa DepEd sector, I am sharing the uh, um, DepEd module instructional design that was given to us by our regional director, um, Garma. And then, ito na po yung sana papasong ngayon yung modular approach dito sa DepEd. So as you can see dito po sa triangle natin, so I have adapted this one po sa Mancom ni R.D. Garma. We have here the distance learning. We have the different learning modalities, specifically the distance learning, the blended learning, and then the face-to-face -face learning. Unfortunately, we could not have the face-to-face -face learning kasi wala pang vaccine. So, face-to-face, -face, pwede pa din naman daw po, pero para, para pa rin niya naka-anchor dito kay distance learning kasi gagamit tayo ng virtual, okay, ng computer sa technology para makapag-face-to-face -face learning. Dito na papasok si modular home study program sa blended learning. Hindi sa sapat lang ang distance learning kung wala tayong modular home study program or modular approach. So according to what we have uh, discussed or according to the, the uh, discussion of our CID chief, the distance learning will just enhance the discussion of the module. But solely, merong computer o wala, merong laptop o wala, or smartphone o wala, ang bata, lahat sila, silang dalawa, ay magkakaroon still ng module. Because this is needed for their blended learning. So dito na po pumapasok ngayon yung ating modular approach. Okay? So, katulad nga po ng sinabi ko kanina, the modular approach should contain the objective and expectation, formative and summative assessment. And then, of course, this should be always validated by our dear uh, supervisors and other experts in the field. Okay? So, yun na po yung nangyayari ngayon na ginagawa ng karamihan ng guro sa ating sa DepEd, yung modular home study program. So, ang ginagawa pa lang naman natin is yung module, which is um, um, proceeding to modular home study program. So, what is the benefit of modular approach? We have your number one, the expedited course creation. Focusing on the components that go into a single module at a time simplifies the process, enabling instructors to uh, more thoughtfully design each learning component. After an instructor has created that first module, he or she has established a framework for creating subsequent modules. In addition, by working on one module at a time, instructors can more easily see how each activity relates to the course syllabus 
and desired learning outcome. So course syllabus sa college sa at sa basic education ay curriculum guide. And then since we have the uh, the curriculum guide ginawa siya nga yung MERS. Binawasan kasi yung competencies because of the effect of the COVID-19. And then we have it there, the simplified course updates. Modular design enables instructors to target specific parts of the course for improvement without having to overhaul the entire course. With a modular course, for example, Textbook changes might mean simply changing the page number of assigned readings or reordering the modules to match the new sequence of the textbook chapter. And in addition to that, modules are portable. Okay? Mas simplified si module kesa sa textbook. And then consistency for users. By incorporating the same types of components in each course of module, Students quickly pick up on the course rhythms and patterns and have a better idea of what to expect than if the course were designed using a varying structure. Often, online students get a little bit lost and they don't understand what they are expected to do. So they are most, uh, they are more comfortable, students are more comfortable in using module. Because modules are portable. Now, according to the study of Sadiq, Sadiq and um, Sadiq and Zamir, 2014, it was being found out that modular teaching is more effective in teaching learning processes as compared to ordinary teaching methods. Because in this modular approach, the students learned at their own pace. So based on the study, nila, so what is the title of the study? So the title of the study that I get that uh, conclusion is the effectiveness of modular approach in teaching at university level. So it has been found out that modular teaching is more effective, right? most effective Kasi siya dahil si student is natututo at their own specific pace. Kung baga, walang pressure doon sa part ng students because they have the material already. They could go back reading important concepts and then after which they could answer the activities that was presented on the module. Number two, it is free self-learning style in which immediate reinforcement feedback provided to practice exercise, which motivate the students and create interest in them. So, immediate merong reinforcement agad. Bakit? Kasi there is a set of practice exercise. Hindi lang isa, dalawa, or tatlo, pwede pang apat. And then modular approach helps to maximize the chances of students' participation in classroom in respect to fulfill the given tasks at the spot so that the students feel free to learn in their own style. Okay, they are given a uh, student's participation. Lahat kasi may copy ng module. So they have, they have the opportunity to participate. Pwede nilang balikan, mayat maya. Ano ba yung medyo confusing na topic sa akin? Ano nga ulit yon? Pwede ko bang basahin o basa, babasahin ulit ni student. And after which, kapag binigyan mo na siya ng time para mag, makapag-recite uh, sa classroom mo via virtual, uh, virtual classroom, then the student will be able to participate because they are free to learn in their own style. Um, with that, before I end my talk, I want to um, share this uh, quotation to you by Benjamin Disraeli. Change is inevitable. Change is constant. Hindi natin mapipigilan ang pagbabago. Lahat tayo nabigla sa pagdating ng COVID-19. And then, we are really, really surprised with, with, with what, is, what will gonna happen in our uh, classroom. Ano na ang magiging new normal sa ating classroom? I know 
me as a teacher, mahirap talaga sa part natin na gumawa ng napakaraming module. But then, para sa bata, para sa bayan, kinakailangan gawin natin para matulungan natin ng bawat mag-aaral na maitawid ang school year po na ito ng maayos. Kasi naniniwala tayo that education is life kahit sa pamamagitan lang ng modular approach. With that, maraming salamat po sa pakikinig ngayong hapon.